So he's pretty much, you know, well endowed with uh, the Christian life and uh, uh, the Christian uh, belief system and everything. But, but now he was ready to share and give his first his first sermon, and so we we have the privilege to hear uh, Paul's first sermon, which is what we'll be actually reading uh, this evening. You know, when I think of of this particular area of scripture, I can't help but remember uh, when I when I gave my first sermon, uh, it was a it was the scariest. Uh, uh, feeling one could ever have. Uh, I came to the podium and I was I was shaking um, from <laughs> and uh, I'm sure the people didn't didn't hear this, but this is what I felt they were hearing. I I felt they could hear the the rattling uh, of my body uh, coming through the P coming through the PA system as I spoke. Um, I was not well prepared, um, so all I did, uh, I read the entire book of Jonah, uh, read it very slowly, and I took my seat. That was my that was my first sermon, <laughs> and uh, and the, the 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 congregation was was ready for some yelling and some screaming, you know, how we preachers do it. Uh, but they never got it out of me. They just got the, the reading of the book of, uh, of the book of Jonah. But we have opportunity this evening. Uh, Paul didn't go down the way I went down. Uh, uh, Paul had already had 10 years of ministry under his belt. And Paul had a lot of, a lot of Bible a lot of Bible to, to share. But uh, many of us that have had the opportunity to speak before uh, individuals probably also can share how they felt uh, when they gave their first uh, message, first Bible study. Uh, it's for whatever reason, it is usually is a, a, a memorable occasion uh it's um something very always something very comical that come out of it i wonder if there's anyone on here with us this evening can share uh your memorable uh, uh experience when you either shared the word or when you had an opportunity to uh to speak uh in front of people uh sharing the word uh, before anyone like to comment on their first experience, it would certainly be appropriate as we dive into uh, the lesson. Go right ahead. Well, my first experience was the same book that you um, that you said that you gave your first um, sermon on Jonah. That was my first sermon as well. When I um, spoke with the people at the, the Way Fellowship Church, and I guess you were not there, so I was to step in, and that was my first sermon that I gave, and I gave it barefooted. So, <laughs> but. Um, I was nervous, but I don't know if the congregation could have tell if I was nervous or not, but it was nerve wracking because it was my first. But, um, but I enjoyed the story of Jonah, so I was a little bit comfortable with it. So, but that was my experience. Nice. Anyone else? Uh, Sister Gibson, I know you got a story. <laughs> I 
Fuck, I don't, I don't know if I can recall. I'm trying to recall. Well, <laughs> I think I, I think I, 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 I spoke, I forgot what top, I still, I have it upstairs, the book, what I spoke on, but, um, oh my, I don't remember what the topic was. I'm so sorry. I don't remember what the topic was, but yes, I was a little nervous, but then, you know, I, I made my way through it, but was a bit nervous. I don't, I said, I don't, I can't recall fully what the topic was on, but I have it written down. Yes, I have it. So I'll, I'll pass and come back. I'll be prepared next time. Amen. Amen. So anyway, it, uh, again, it, as you talk to many other uh, believers, you uh, often find out that, um, most of us have something very comical uh, to say about our first uh, experience, you know, sharing the word and, um, and, and what have you. So, so Paul uh, uh, makes his way on this, on, on, on this trip. And um, when he, um, when he arrives, uh, look at verse 14 from, uh, it says from, from Perga, they went on to Pisidon, Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. After reading from the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them saying, brothers, if you have a word of exhortation, for the people, please speak. What is a word of exaltation? What is a word of exaltation? Can anyone tell me what you what you find to be a word of exaltation? A word to encourage the body. A word to encourage the body. Okay. Anyone else? Word of exaltation. A word to bring glory and honor to God. Bring gl glory and honor to God. Both of them are, both of those are, are, are very, very good ones. So uh, uh, usually when, uh, when individuals give words of exaltation, it usually come to not convict you, not condemn you, not put you down or whatever but it's, it's there to lift you up, uh, lift you up. And, and uh, you know, the word of God is designed to, uh, you know, to lift, lift us up and, 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 and somewhat, somewhat in, empower, empower you. So, so for whatever reason, uh, Paul, uh, who was formerly named Saul, uh, is signaled to, to share with the, uh, the, the brethren a word of exaltation, a word of encouragement, uh, uh, a, a word to, uh, to kind of speak into the lives of those that were there. And so they said, if you have a word of exaltation for the people, please speak. Look at verse 16. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosperous during their stay in Egypt with the mighty power, he led them out of that country. What, what mighty power uh, uh, leading them out of the country? What mighty power do, does our uh, biblical history tell us as he led them out of that country? Can, 
Anyone elaborate on that a little bit? What mighty power? What mighty experience of power did we see? With them coming and going to the um, the, 40 day, the 40 years heading to the promised land and yeah. the Red Sea was part manna from heaven. So a lot of miracles was going on. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. And, and uh, so, you, and you you touched on it. He's referring to that uh, that that awesome parting of the uh, of of the of the Red Sea and them walking on dry ground, uh, going over uh, towards the Promised Land. So, so Paul makes reference to that again. He's speaking to uh, to Jews. And he's speaking to uh, converted uh, Gentiles. And so he takes them all the way back to Egypt. And he makes reference to one of God's uh, most, most powerful, uh, one of the most talked about miracles of God in showing his might when God parts the Red Sea. So he says, the God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosperous during their stay in Egypt with mighty power. He led them out of that country. For about 40 years, he endured their conduct in the wilderness. Now, notice the... Uh, 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 Paul uses the word that that God endured their conduct. Uh, uh, can any one of you make reference to uh, what their conduct? What kind of conduct do you recall? Uh, them they, were having? Very, they were very ungrateful. They weren't thankful. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, they were. Uh, they were complaining, uh, they were uh, mummering, they uh, got, got tired of the fresh uh, manna uh, that uh, he fed them. And, and uh, then they uh, was uh, given quail and uh, they were uh, not real happy people at all. And when they learned that the Egyptians were out to uh, pursue them, were headed to pursue them and take them back uh, captive, uh, they became upset with Moses for pulling them out of that situation because now they feel like, well, now you have really put us in danger. So, so we see that here. Again, this is, this is all in uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the message of Paul. And, 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 and what we're doing, we're really just taking Paul's uh, message and we're kind of breaking it up and kind of taking it apart. Uh, look at verse 19. And he overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. So, so Paul is, is giving them 450 years of biblical history, uh, which, is he, which is what he's, he's given to them as part of his words of exaltation. And, 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 after, and, and after this, the scripture tells us, and, and, after, and, and after this, God gave them judge, judges until the time of Samuel, the prophet. So again, they, they are all uh, recipients of a, of a great Bible lesson. They're all recipients of a great Bible lesson. So he tells them that, uh, that that after this, God gave them judge, uh, gave them judges, until the time of Samuel the prophet. For those of you just tuning in with it, with Acts chapter thirteen, and we are right 
uh, we're, we're right in the middle of uh, verse 20. Then the people asked for a king, verse 21, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. Now, it, 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 it is amazing that he, he brings them to the point of, 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 of Saul and, and David becoming king because David is, is, is really where it really un, unravels, is, is really where it unfolds. Uh, after removing, again, verse 22, after removing Saul, he made David their king. Now, David and Saul was two types. There's, there's two ways of defining uh, these two kings. Saul was, a, was someone that was chosen by the people. But David was chosen by God. And so that's what separates the uh, the 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 the, uh, the the two apart. Uh, God wanted to be their ultimate king, but they wanted a king that they could touch and and they could be in the in the presence of. And it went to Saul. But we know the story of of, of David and David's appointment as king, um, there is no indication in David's life where David made preparation to become a king. What we know of David's earlier life is that he was very good with, uh, with, with sheep and, um, and so the father kept him out working with the sheep and, and he had all kinds of experiences with the sheep, but but there is no indication that he was being groomed and he was being prepared to be the king of Israel. So Saul was a Saul was chosen by the people. David was a, a, a anointed by God. So verse twenty two again. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And, and you won't find this nowhere else in scripture. And I, I had the hardest time. I was looking for this passage of scripture. Sometime we're going to have the hard, hardest part because I was looking for it in the Old Testament but I find it in Paul's sermon. This is where this is recorded, is in, is, in, is in Paul's sermon. Let me read this one more time because it's very profound. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Hear these words, it's right here. He will do everything I want him to do. If, you ever get involved in a in, in a, a Bible quiz, and someone raises the question, "Why was David a man after God's own heart?" Here it is 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 buried right in Paul's sermon of exaltation to the people, uh, right here where it says, "A man after my own heart, he will do." everything I want him to do. That's how in all of Paul's study, and, and, and Paul uh, was able to study under a, a great uh, a Jewish scholar by the, by the name of Gamal. And so Paul was able to gather all of that information from 
from all of his teachings about the life of David, the life of David, that whatever God wanted David to do, David was willing to do that. That's, a, uh, that's an awesome uh, title uh, to have and, and uh, each of us should truly desire that uh, with, 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 with all of our heart, uh, uh, to be a man, to be a woman after the heart of God. What, what beautiful words to be, to be said uh, about you. David has long gone and has, has made uh, uh, many mistakes while he was on this earth. But still, the believers, uh, the biblical believers, have documented him to be a man that would do everything or anything that God wanted him to do. Again, we're still dissecting Paul's sermon. And he goes on in verse 23, from this man dis descent, descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior, Jesus as he promised. That's what he says. It is, it, is, it is through him. It is through him that God has brought forth a savior, Jesus, as he, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. Now, what Paul had just done uh, to them. Paul had pretty much preached the Old Testament and the New Testament all in one setting, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now these were the, he was, uh, he was, he was, he was speaking in the, in the, in the synagogue as we've established earlier on. And he connects them they they obviously knew the law but he connects them to the savior that represents grace he connects them to the, the to the to the savior that that represents that represents grace and so he goes on to goes on to say he says uh, uh, as John was com uh, com completing, his works, he said, who do you suppose I am? I am not the one you are looking for, but there is one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Again, Paul is giving uh, them uh, a lot of history, a, a lot of a, a lot of information that truly uh, connects them uh, to, to to Christ, and and he and he goes and he goes on to say, "Fellow children of Abraham, and you God fearing Gentiles." And he's talking to the Jews and he's talking to the Gentiles. That's everybody. It is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. Okay. It is this message of salvation. It's been, it's been, it's been sent. He talked earlier first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. The, the people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the word of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper grounds for the death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb, 
but God raised him from the dead. And for many days, he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. Again, this is, this is all Paul's sermon. Uh, they call it Paul words of exaltation uh, to the people. And so when we, when we, when we are, are preaching to individuals, we should never ever lose sight of what God has done for us. And so Paul takes him on this journey and now he's at a point of explaining to him, to them, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. You know, you, you think he addressed the power that, that parted the Red Sea, but now he's talking about the power of God that raised Jesus from the, from, from the grave. And Jesus was left with countless numbers of witnesses, witnesses to testify, to testify about all of the great things God has done. You know, for, for, for man to be a, a fairly young convert, I think we could say, Certainly, he understands his biblical history. So he goes on in verse 32. We tell you the good news. He said, we tell you the good news, what God promised our ancestors. He has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second Psalms. You are my son. Today I have become your father. God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the holy, I will give you the holy and sure blessing promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, you will not let your Holy One see decay. Now, again, this is all, this is all in Paul's sermon, Paul's, Paul, Paul, Paul message to the brethren. This is all Paul's words of exaltation, his words to in, encourage your brother. I'm going, to, I'm going to stop right there, and I just want each one of you, if you can just find a couple of areas in what we read in Paul's message uh, to the, the Jews and to the Gentiles, what you find uh, the most encouraging and the most uplifting in this powerful message. Paul's first powerful message to the people of God. What you find encouraging and intriguing in this message? Who want to go first? Go right here, please. Go right ahead, please. Just turn your mic on. What, what chapter are you in? We're in 13, my brother. Okay. Go ahead, my dear sister. What I find intriguing is that it's the last, the last, um, the last verse that we read, and concerning that he raised him up from the dead, and now no more to return to corruption. And he said, "On this wise, I'll give you the sure mercies of David." Wherefore, he asked also in Another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Raising up, I think that's the most powerful to, to me, um, for someone to, the reason for God to raise up his son from the dead, that it, I think that's the greatest miracle in the New Testament or in the word of God. 
because he as said he would not see corruption because he was God. So the body did not decay. And we know, you know, in three, Jesus, the third day he rose again. Most of the times the body after the third, going on the third, fourth day, the body started decaying. So I think that was the greatest miracle in the Bible, in the New Testament. It's my view. Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. Anyone else? Go right ahead, please. So we go, we, we will uh, move on. Um, when we look at verse 36, again, we all we're doing is we are uh, 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 dissecting Paul's first sermon. Look at verse 36. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep and he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. It was known um, during uh, the life of Jesus um, that, that when a person dies, that the, that the spirit of that person's spirit hovers over them for uh, three days. And so oftentimes in scripture, we'll see that it is after the third day, you know, the, uh, because uh, they, they're, they're people that have been known to have been dead and they discovered they weren't quite dead. And, you know, we do know that uh, uh, an individual can be pronounced dead, but, you know, they, they're able to find a pulse and, and use that pulse to kind of bring, bring, bring life back. So often it is said in scripture that on the third day, because it's viewed that if you're still around, if, if, if uh, that you, you've been, you, you're, you're completely dead. But in, in Jesus case, it was on that, on the third day, the scripture makes reference to the fact that Jesus rose from the grave, his, his, his body, his body never, uh, never experienced any, uh, any, any ounce of uh, decay. So he says, therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Now he's getting real personal. The sermon is now you know, when you hear a sermon, you, it's gotten real personal. <laughs> it's gotten real personal now. You, okay. And so he says, therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. So he's telling these Jewish brothers and these Gentile uh, uh, brothers, he's saying, you could be at your very best, but you'll never get to this point. You you, you never get to this point. It took Jesus and his blood and his sacrifice to allow you to get to this point. And then he says, take care that what the prophet have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers and wonders and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you will never believe, even if someone told you, even if someone told you, Habakkuk also uh, makes, that, uh, makes that prophetic uh, word as well. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. 
when the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts of, to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who taught with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God, to continue in the grace of God. So what that tells us is that they believed in what was being preached and uh, became uh, develop a hunger for the for the message that uh, that Paul had had made available to them, and it was truly a word to encourage them. It was truly a word that would take them places that they never ever thought they would go. The word of God is still, you know, the most, the most powerful thing that you can ever be involved in. And I, uh, my wife and I, we were having a, a discussion uh, concerning a client of hers earlier. And, um, and we were just talking about the, you know, the greatest thing that we can offer to any individual is to encourage them with the word of God. Um, we can't use nothing else, but we can encourage people with the word of God. And, and, and so often, you know, we attempt to just use our own words to bring forth peace and encouragement to people, but our own words won't do it, people of God. It is the word of God and the word of God only that will provide the encouragement that we all need. We all need the word of God. You know, if you're down and out, the word of God is designed to encourage you that, that wherever, wherever you go, whatever you do, you have to have the word of God. Remember the scripture tells us to take the word of God and hide it in our heart so we will not sin. Hide the word of God in your heart. Why is it so important to hide the word of God in your heart? The, as long as you got the word of God hidden in your heart, uh, you are able, uh, when you're in situations where you can't get to a Bible, you're in situations, you can't get to a Bible study, you can't get to a Sunday service. If you got the word of God hidden in you, you can begin to read the word of God. I, I like to encourage folks to take scriptures and memorize them, memorize the scriptures, get those scriptures in your spirit. The, the more you're able to memorize scriptures and get it in your spirit, not only are you able to be of encouragement to others, but you can be of encouragement to yourself by, by having, having the word of God. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no mention that, that Paul had a long manuscript that he was reading from uh, as he was speaking these words of exaltation to these Jews and to these Gentiles. But we, but we see the results. We see the results of the, of, of the word of God. It is, it, is, it is time, people of God, that we return back to the word of God. You know, the greatest thing that counselors and individuals can do to help other individuals that are struggling is to give them the word of God. Give them the word of God. The word of God will work. It's been working uh, through centuries. And, 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 and Paul takes us all the way back to Egypt in his message uh, to us this evening. He takes us all the way back to Egypt and he concludes his message by taking us to the tomb an empty tomb, the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. What a powerful, what a powerful message. What a powerful message. This, this, this same individual that was preaching, he wrote, I believe in, I believe in, in Romans, uh, in Romans gospel, that he, that, that he stated, that he stated, and his, his prayer was that, that he said, I, I pray that I might know him and the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That's, that's where Paul was at. That's where Paul was at. 
and it's great that he shared this message with them and they were they, they were so encouraged that they followed him and began asking more questions more questions wanting to know more about him look at look at verse 42 as we as we close out our uh, study this evening it says as paul and barnabas were leaving the synagogue the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God, continue in the grace of God. We're gonna we're gonna stop right there. We'll finish up the other part uh, next week. Want to open up uh, the lines for any questions or any final thoughts uh, that any of you would like to share with us this evening. Anything that kind of stood out uh, that you want to uh, uh, share further? Want you to uh, do so at this time. Just go ahead and turn your mic on and begin to share. Anyone, go right ahead, please. Go right ahead, please. Anyone, if you're speaking, you you need to unmute. I guess the, um, I believe the word was so powerful, you know, about Christ that, you know, the people want to hear more. They were hungry. They wanted to hear more of what they had to say. So, um, you know, I just thought that was something powerful for, um, for Paul to do. Amen. And spread the gospel to where, you know, people are hungry for it and needed it. Yeah. Very good. Never underestimate the power of the, of the word of God because... As he shared, uh, the people were listening, and obviously it was very impactful on many that were, were present. Anyone else? Go right ahead. Pastor Eric, look like you're open, your line's open, but we're not here. Well, <clears throat> chap, um, chapter 13 is, I think, uh, mostly about, uh, I think, I, if I remember correctly, Paul um, establishing the church. And um, especially, I, I want to I want to say that Antioch is his is his home is his home church. Mm -hmm. I, I would say it was his home church. And um, what was significant about this is, is who he was bringing it to, um, and strengthening the, the convert the, the converts, um, meaning that you know he was bringing the word to the Gentiles. So I, I, I believe that this is more of, of us seeing Paul in the beginning of, us, of, of establishing the church, bringing the word to the Gentiles and still having conflicts with, with, with the Jews. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Very good. Anyone else? Go right ahead, please. Any other thoughts, questions, observations? Uh, go right ahead. Excellent. So we, we will pick up uh, next week at uh, verse 44. I didn't want to want to get into there. There is a lot uh, there I think that we can we, we can share, uh, but we do we did we did stop right at uh, Paul being given an invitation to come back. Uh, and, and basically there's you know they're basically saying what you shared with us, we want more of that. We need more of that, and um, and I think we'll we're going to see uh, what the Word of God is able what Word of God is able to do. Uh, you know, we I think so, so often we just don't give the Word uh, the respect and the attention that it really requires because the the 
the, the Bible says that God's word will accomplish uh, whatever it set out to accomplish. It will not return void. And so we have to, we have to uh, embrace ourselves and depend on the word of God. Although it may appear so often in times, it may appear that the word, is God, word of God is not working for you. We have to still believe. We have to still believe in the midst of all of our trials and, 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 and tribulations. Sometimes it seems like the more we embrace God, the worse things get. But we have to understand that God is working. God is working. Oftentimes when things are getting worse, God is at work. And there's something that God needs to, uh, something that God needs to do before uh, the breakthrough is required. Uh, and so we have to cling to that. So I want, want to encourage you uh, to read the remaining of this uh, chapter, beginning at verse 44, uh, all the way uh, all the way to 50, 52, uh, in preparation for, uh, for our Bible study next week. Again, it's been uh, great having each of you here. We're going to uh, want to close out in a word of prayer. If there are some special prayer requests uh, at this time, uh, we want you to uh, make those known. I uh, want to have Pastor Eric, if he would close us out in prayer. Any special prayer requests, I want, uh, want to uh, have you uh, keep uh, Dr. J.D. Norris son in prayer. Uh, his son, uh, James Norris, uh, has been hospitalized with some, some breathing, some lung issues, as well as his daughter. Uh, and they're not sure what's wrong with his, his, his daughter, Dr. J.D. Norris' family told him that I will um, share with the group uh, his, his request uh, for prayer, you know, Dr. J.D. Norris, that's my spiritual father. So want, want us to keep him in, in prayer, obviously keep the church uh, family in prayer. Any other special prayer requests, uh, please make them known at this time. Any other special prayer requests? Everybody's doing great. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Uh, silence, silence. Well, praise God. We praise God for you. For um, being... Keep my mom in prayer. Okay. Regarding health. Health. Okay, uh, Pastor Eric, I think that is it. Uh, again, we are uh, thankful for everyone. Uh, that is here with us this evening. We're going to close out right now. I just, I just appreciate the Bible study tonight. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I appreciate the Bible study tonight. Thank you. It was very, very enlightening. Thank you oh. very much. Oh, God bless you. So this is always a blessing to have you on with us. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Heavenly Father, most gracious Lord, we come to you tonight, Father God, just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up and starting us on our way. We thank you, Father God, that you allowed us to make it back home safely and everything was well. Father God, we thank you for this Sunday, this uh, Bible study, a lesson that we had, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for the word that went forth. Father God, we want to be like Paul, Father God, and we want to we want to continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, Father God, regardless of who may be offended, Father God. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for Pastor Baker, Father God, and his family, Father God. Continue to look upon them, Father God. Bless them, Father God, in, in each and every area that they need a blessing, Lord. Father God, we come to you this, this night, Father God, just asking you, Lord, um, to have your way, Father God, in J.D. Norris' uh, family's life, Father God. Father God, there's some sickness that has hit his son and his daughter, and we ask you in the name of Jesus, Father God, to cover them with the blood, Father God, of Jesus Christ, Lord. Father God, we know 
that by his stripes, Father God, that they're already healed, Father God. We're going to claim their healing right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to regulate their blood, Father God. Touch each and every blood vessel, Father God. Touch them from the top of their heads, from the soles of their feet, Father God, and heal what may be wrong with them, Father God. Oh, Lord, we know that you're a way maker, Father God, and we know that you can never fail, Father God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Father God. So, Father God, we're going to lean unto you, Father God, from which cometh all our help, Father God. Father God, we ask you to lift up Sister Baker's mother, Lord. Touch her, Father God, because we know that you were wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, Father God, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, Father God, that we're already healed, Father God. So, Father God, we're going to claim our healing, Father God, for Sister Baker's mother, Father God, for J.D. Norris' uh, um, uh, son and, and daughter, Father God, and anybody that's on his prayer line that may be dealing with any kind of uh, health issues, Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, over our lives, Father God. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent your name throughout all this earth, Lord. And, Father God, we, we stand on the un, un, adulterated word, Father God, that, that, that goes forth, Father God, every day, Father God. Father God, help us, Father God, to learn of you, Lord. Help us to uh, seek you daily, Lord, because we don't have any other help but you. So, Father God, in the precious blood of Jesus, we pray, Father God, that you hear our petition and you hear our cries, Lord. We come to you, Father God, on, on bended knee, Father God, just asking you, Father God, to heal bodies, Lord, to be with the, the, the sick, Lord. Father God, be with the workers that, that take care of the sick, Lord. Oh, Father God, we ask you just to go through each and every um, municipality, Father God. Go through uh, the jail houses, Father God, and prisons, Father God, and just have your way, Father God, here on this earth, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for each and every person on this prayer line, and on this uh, Bible study, Father God, and those who had a heart to, to, to be on but could not make it. We thank you, Father God, and we love you, Lord. It's in Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Uh, and we thank God for each one of you.